praise the lord father there is nothing a man can have that the there is no grace wisdom there is no intelligence that a man can ever have that does not come from you and so when men celebrate us we point them back to you you are the source and the sustainer the lifter the blesser the announcer the keeper of our destinies we cry that in this conference we'll visit your people in the name of Jesus Christ thank you for passing is their wife we pray in the name of Jesus that you will uphold this ministry Lord, we pray that as we explore your word, truly let our lives be changed. In the name of Jesus, we have come because we believe in this vision, we believe this agenda, we believe this prophecy. Father, even though we are teaching along the lines of financial empowerment, but Spirit of the living God, we give you unrestrained access. Touch any aspect of our lives that you will. That whilst we are teaching on finances, let the sick still be healed. Let the oppressed still be delivered. Let yokes be broken, O God of heaven. Let mantles still fall upon your people. We vow in the name of Jesus that... We will return the glory, the honor, and every adoration to your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Please greet one another and be seated. In honor a very powerful. He's not just a financial apostle. He's really a man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, evangelist. God bless you. Um, our lives will change in the name of Jesus. What really makes the ministration of the Spirit powerful is the ability, the duality of the operation of the Spirit when the word is dispensed is what differentiates the preaching of the gospel from just speaking or from a lecture the jurisdiction of that which you receive from a lecture is information are we together but then when the word of god comes there is a dual operation of the spirit number one is that he penetrates the minds the hearts of men and begins to reorder their understanding and then the second dimension is that whilst that is happening there is impartation that is coming from the word that means a deposit of the grace dimension to validate that which has been known it is not enough to know we must be empowered to prove the substance of what we know are we together now so while the word of god is coming two things will be happening basically number one our understanding will be corrected adjusted reoriented and so we embrace it with meekness but number two we must be sensitive to know that much more than um, the information we are receiving that for everything God says behind his word is the grace to prove the tangibility of that dimension hallelujah there are people all over this auditorium and then a number of people scattered outside probably people following online and um, it is never God's God's idea to gather a peace summit like this 
and then to waste their time no there is so much you would have been doing and you came first to honor god to honor this vision to honor your pastor and i assure you that you will leave this place truly transformed in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we had a little discussion with pastor and his dear wife um, over at the hotel before um, coming and um, we began to talk about a few things and i may want to start from there just to prepare our hearts there are a number of things that when subjects and topics that are very touchy and very sensitive um, and every time you come up with anything that has to do with those teachings usually you will confront age-long ideologies please listen very carefully ideologies that have been framed from well-meaning sincere people but the imbalance that has come from these teachings especially when it has to do with a territory and one of those areas is the issue of finance please look up the mere mention of the word finance um, creates a very negative psychological disposition in the mind of many people especially among believers very strangely the moment you mention the word rich wealth money finance suddenly there has been an indoctrination that has been for centuries maybe that has associated all of these things number one with carnality number two with lack of spiritual growth are we together and then number three there has been a dissociation so it's as though you have to choose to be blessed or be spiritual so every time you propose any subject that reflects the blessing of the lord people will usually be uncomfortable because it is as though you are telling them to relinquish their passion for god and their passion for spiritual things to pursue wealth are we together and i know that many of such people are here in this place sincere people it has nothing to do with being good or bad the things that i'll be sharing with you tonight will among other things attempt to deconstruct those belief systems so that they bring us to a position where we will be able to step into the fullness of all that god has for us this is my third time ministering at this summit and i will start again by repeating that which i would always say while it is true that there have been a lot of imbalances are we together along the subject of finance um many people have been defrauded especially by men of god many people have been ill-treated many people have been wrongly indoctrinated many people have been taken advantage of and so the psychology around wealth and men of god and ministry the moment people begin to advocate the blessing of the lord many people just they have all kinds of very bitter experiences in their minds and they bring it out and mix everyone and believe everyone is doing the same thing there is always a remnant are we together i need to get this straight out of the way so that we do not come with preconceived notions especially for those of us who are coming for the first time so that we do not come believing that this is some some summit that is organized by spiritually careless immature money mongers who are just out to take advantage of people no this meeting is being organized by people who have gone through the dealings of the spirit and they understand the jurisdiction of every provision that is allocated for the saints so i want you to be very comfortable because the things that you are about to learn and receive are not only true but will be dispensed with balance and intelligence are we together now i, I want to just keep your spirit at ease that this is not some exegesis of materialistic 
carnal people who are here to fuel your lust for money, you would soon find out that wealth in the kingdom is truly not about just acquiring money. There is an agenda that is bigger than that. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Are we on the same page now? So in one minute, wherever you are sitting or standing, just pray and say, Father, I open up my spirit to learn. I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to validate my preconceived notion on what I think this meeting would be. My heart is open to receive. I'm here on behalf of my family. I'm here on behalf of my generation. I'm here in response to the cry of a generation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will tell you why the subject of wealth and abundance, please listen carefully, has received so much attack. I will tell you why. Because Satan understands that when he finds a people who can have resources and at the same time whose hearts are stayed on God and the purposes of the kingdom that is a weapon of mass destruction to the gates of hell now the technology of wealth in the world system is that you choose wealth or the health of your soul are we together now Satan will never allow you to have both you are going to have to choose to be wealthy the world's way and while your wealth index is rising your spiritual life the health of your sanity the health of your saneness continues to plunge down are we together now so it is always to use your soul as the commodity of exchange please listen so the Bible says it this way. What shall it profit a man? So he's talking profits now. We're discussing business. What shall it profit a man if that man gains the whole world and loses his soul? So we're talking of gaining and we're talking of losing things. That the world can be gained. The soul can be lost. Are we together now? Like you lose your money and gain back whatever you bought with it. So the economy of Satan is such that the real thing he's looking for is your soul. Satan does not need money. The realm of the spirit does not need money. Satan is not after wealth at all. The whole idea of poverty is not um, to stop papers from entering your pocket or to stop notes from reflecting in your bank account. It's warfare. This is what I want to open your eyes to see. Please listen very carefully. We are allocated time. The unit of destiny is time. Everybody say time. Please shout it with me. Say time. That means your destiny is measured as a function of your time. And that you are only useful on earth when you have time. Are we together now? No matter what you have, if time is extracted from your life, then you do not have a basis for living again. Now, Satan is aware of this. That the moment a man has time, he has not lost anything. You can lose a job, but if I give you time, the job can come. Follow me. This is a summit. God is working on our intelligence. You can lose your spiritual life, but if I give you time, you can gain it back. 
you can lose your prayer life. A man can scam you of millions and billions of you The unit of destiny is what? Time. The most important commodity on earth from the earth dimension is time. Everything only finds value when time allows it to. Are we together now? Meet a dying man right now. Your pastor is a medical doctor. I'm sure he's seen so many patients at the verge of death. Meet a dying man right now. Ask that dying man, what do you want me to give you? He will not say real estate. Look up please. He will not say oil and gas. He will not say education. He will ask for time. So the man knows that every other thing in my life will only work if I have that means if I really want to hurt you, I must do something to your time. Follow me carefully. No matter what I have done to you, if I don't touch your time, I didn't hurt you. So Satan being aware of this came up with a plot and arranged a methodology across a sphere to ensure that men lose time. The battle of wealth is a battle of time redemption. It's not a battle of riches. No. It's not a battle of business. No. It's a battle of time redemption. Because everything we do in destiny is a function of time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to learn the ways of the kingdom. Are we together? It takes time to grow in prayer. It takes time to access the anointing. It takes time to build relationships. It takes time to raise your children. It takes time to impact a generation. And Satan, knowing that, fights time. You think he's fighting your money. He has no business with your money. What Satan is looking for in your life today is time. Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Time. Every time Satan sees a man having time, he becomes uncomfortable. So what can I do to extract time? Because the moment he knows what can happen when there is time, the moment God sees time, anything can be put in that time. An encounter, an anointing, everything. So when Satan sees time, time is like a tray. Anything can be put on it. The battle is a battle for time. Not a battle for money. Not cars and houses. No. Time. Satan knows that the moment you have time, your relationship with your wife will grow. He knows that when you have time, you will raise your children after the fear of the Lord. He knows you will teach them. He knows when you have time, you will wake up in the morning and have Bible study with your family. He knows when you have time, you will visit your parents. He knows when you have time, you will be a worker in church. He knows. Please listen. We are just setting a foundation. He knows when you have time, you will sit with your children and teach them the ways of the Lord. He knows that when you have time, you will be able to impact a generation and build something that is worthwhile. And so in the economy of Satan, the battle is a battle of time. The idea is that the best option is to kill you so that that way automatically time is finished. But because the law of time and chance still happens to all. So whether you know anything about long life or, or not, there is already a spiritual principle that can preserve you. So he comes up with a way of doing something to your time 
that makes it as though you do not have time. Please listen very carefully. Herein lies the mystery behind the busyness of men. They were programmed to be that busy because you never have time for God when you are busy. It takes time. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So, please come, my brother. Come, my dear. Come stand here, please. Both of you. Satan knows that provided this man can have time, he can get resources in that time and spend the time building his wife building the ministry he knows that if this man is a pastor and his dear wife if this man has time and stays with god the one that this man will become he will transform a generation so what satan will do is he will check in the archives of men what is the one thing that men can give their time for and he found out in his research that money is the one thing that men can ah, goodness. He found out that men can be careless over their health and ignore it. Men can even be careless over their children. But he found out that every time money shows up, men are willing to give time to get it. And he said, that's it. I will make sure they continue to get to look for this money and never find it. Because if I keep it away from them, then they can use their time to look for it. And every time they want to be discouraged, I will make them to touch it a little so that they continue. It's like a bait. Kingdom Well Summit. Time. So the moment you get a job, your salary is a hundred thousand. You are about to say, thank you, Jesus. Satan does something to the economy. Everything increases except your salary. And now you have to give more time to get more money. And you say, my wife, sorry, you are only going to see me by nine or ten in the night. And then you will not see. And when I come, just serve my food and go to bed. You do that for five years. Your relationship is being destroyed. Your children do not know you again. They sleep when you arrive and they are off to school when you are awake. Do that in 10 years. Their only mentor becomes their teachers. While he's doing that, he will program a man who does not know God to be the primary voice in the life of your child. While all of this is happening, in 10 years, your world is destroyed. As a man of God, Satan knows that you need resources to do a lot of things. So he will make sure the time you should spend building, you are using that time to scheme out ways of raising money. How do I bring, how do I raise this offering? How do I do this? How do I do that? Then on top of that, he will make sure something happens in your immediate family that will take away your prayer time. It's not a battle of money. It is a battle of time. What Satan is looking for is not your bank account. Give him your ATM, he will throw it back at your face. He doesn't need it. What Satan needs is time. Everybody please say time. Time. When he met the disciples, Jesus now, he said, follow me and I will make you. Is that correct? They left what they were doing with their time. And they started following Jesus. Now, when they felt frustrated because Jesus said, I'm now going. And they said, what is the justification for our time? We gave you our time. Now you have troubled the Roman government and there is nothing for us to go back to our families with. And he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, there is no man, paraphrasing, who gives me time. But in this life, he will reap this and that and that and that. It's a battle of time. When a man sees his family only two times a year, 
because he gave his time to something that is not the will of God but then because that is the way the economy was manipulated so Satan uses money is it okay if I bring out some money look up some of you are already awake right now money now it doesn't mean you are bad Tonight's service is a real deliverance service. Look up, please. This thing you see has carried people from one location to the other. What an arm robber could not do to you. Money. You literally follow it to another state. People have followed this into holes to mine gold. People have followed this into the air. People have followed this everywhere. People have lied for this. Changed their date of birth for this. Rejected their parents for this. Denied Jesus for this. Turn to become preachers of lies for this. Married many women for this. And left the ones they have for this. This has made many people to marry people who are not the will of God. Look up. Oh. This has made people to hang themselves on a tree and die. I'm robbers right now. Someone is planning to rob by 12. This is it. The same energy it takes to be hard working. The same energy it takes to steal. This is what the guy is looking for. He will jump someone's fence because of this. No bank invites you to come to that building just because this is kept there. You leave your house and walk and the distance is not a problem. The queue is a little issue. An ATM that does not have posters for invitation will force you to visit it every day because this is inside. And you must honor that ATM with the honor you cannot even give God. You stand with absolute respect. When you slot your card, you, you honor it because it's bringing this out. There are some of you who would have been educated, but this stopped you. Not Satan. This. There are some of you today who would never be in certain predicaments, but this stopped you. There are some of you who are doing three, four jobs. Don't feel bad. This is a conference. This is what you are looking for. There are some of you who are in your 20s and 30s, but you look like 50. This made you so. Harmless. Has no voice. Doesn't speak. Doesn't have a chain. But is worse than an arm robber. Doesn't have a chain yet it can tie you down. A woman you love all your life. It can come between two of you. And as light as it is. It has the power to separate you. If all you think we are talking about is money, you are joking. If all you think we are talking about is real estate and all of this. Now those things are wonderful. We have a business session tomorrow. But let me tell you, this is the understanding that must be corrected. It's not called Wealth Summit. It's called Kingdom Wealth Summit. The first word there is kingdom. You must understand the government and the system you are under. And the motivation behind how Satan behaves. I preached the gospel many years ago. Signs and wonders. But this was going to take me to the cell. This. Because I could not afford to pay the sound people. Where was the power that healed the sick? Couldn't it bring this? How can I finish a crusade and minister to people 
and I'm calling upon the name of the Lord and I'm about to be locked because of this. Listen, if you don't pay attention to what you are learning in this summit, I guarantee you, you will pay the price. It is true. The days that we live in are not days where you just ignore this. No. There are certain truths when you don't know, you will pay for it. Many people have sold their soul to the devil because of this. Listen to me. You ask many wealthy people do not love God. If they are open, they will tell you that they continue to rise based on their fraternity with a system that is antichrist and their covenants and ordinances with dark powers. Anybody who has worked with multi-millionaires will tell you don't allow the intelligence and the business prowess to fool you. Behind all of that paraphernalia is, is a deep-rooted covenant with dark powers to ensure sustainability. Babylon is a goddess that sits upon a horse and is also a harlot that is searching for men and that you can carry out her lottery with her and part of the many benefits she will give you is money. So when you now decide that you want to rise and not fraternize with Babylon, then you are in trouble. Are we together? Let me show you something that will bless you. Revelations chapter 19. Blessed be the name of the Lord who brings light to us. 18. Is it projected? Are we going to have it projected? Okay, beautiful. 18. No, Revelation chapter 18. I'll just give you the verses and then you'll move there. We'll read a few verses. This is the fall of Babylon in prophecy. Babylon as a system. Are we ready? We'll read verse 2 and verse 3. And verse 4. And then we will go to verse 9. And then eventually we will end in verse 13. The media, I'm sure you have that. Okay? One to read. Everyone is projected. Let's read together. One to read. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Uh huh. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Read verse 3 with understanding. And the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. Read the next verse. And the merchants of the earth, how did they become rich? Our words rich through the abundance of our delicacies. Stop there. This is the secret between behind the wealth of the heathen that behind all those business ventures you see there is a fraternity their fornication with this goddess called Babylon and that in exchange for their halotry with her they received many things go to verse 9 please verse 9 we're reading from verse 9 to 13. Let's read together. One to read. And the kings of the earth who have committed what? Fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her for they shall see the smoke of her burning. Read up. We're reading to 13. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying, Alas, alas, 
that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Eleven. Stop. Who are those who will cry? Not the inhabitants of the earth. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Why? For no man buyeth her merchandise. She's a harlot. She's a businesswoman. Let's see what she sells. Verse 12. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones. Read on. And pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and cyan wood and all manner of vessels of ivory. Read on. And all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and of marble 13. Read on. And cinnamon and odors and ointment. She sells anointing. And wine and oil and flour and wheat. Read on. And beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves. What does she sell else? What a business woman that will sell anything including the souls of men. Where did she get the souls? The ones who came to exchange their souls for money. What shall it profit a man if he gains? They lost their souls to her and gained the world. That's how she got those souls. Are we together now? So the economy of darkness is lose your soul while you prosper. If you are willing to subscribe to that technology, then here you go. You can rise without God and be blessed. You can be a millionaire and a billionaire and you can continue. So here's what the apostle says. Beloved, I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in good health. But even as your soul prospers. Now this is the trouble. The trouble is not wealth. The trouble is that as money grows, your soul is growing. And Satan says, no way. This bargain cannot work. Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. The real battle is the battle of time, is the battle of your soul. My brothers and my sisters, please listen. It's not the battle for your business. When Satan came to Jesus, remember I had the temptation. When he came to Jesus, the first temptation was turn this stone to bread. Satisfy your inner desires. And Jesus said, no. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Next temptation was the temptation of his spiritual life. He takes him to a holy side and says, fall down. Backslide, go down. After all, the angels will hold you. And then the next temptation is the temptation of wealth. He takes him to an exceeding high mountain and drops him there and shows him the glories of the world in a moment of time and says, All this has been given to me. All I want you to do is bow to me. Satan does not want your account. Satan does not want your business. Satan does not even want your child. What's he going to do with that? This is what he wants. Your allegiance. Because man is the zenith of God's creation. The fullness of the express image of the Christ. So when you bow to him. Remember this is what was happening in hell too if you read. The Pauline epistle. He said that principalities and powers were upon him. Forcing him to bow. But then when the legal claims of justice were satisfied. The Bible says he 
he shook them he made a public show of them triumphing over them satan has been obsessed with transgenerational allegiance please listen very carefully it is your soul that satan wants it is not your money i tell you why there's no money in your account because he knows that you have been programmed by a system that when there is no money in your account it's impossible for you to keep quiet and sleep because the civilization that you live in is driven by economy and sooner or later you will have needs that only money can pay for and it will compel you to get up and do something with your time to get it back one more scripture and i'll begin to teach genesis 42 thank you genesis chapter 42 we're reading the first two verses is god blessing us tonight genesis chapter 42 i want to show you the technology that causes believers to backslide that technology that will always drive people away from god do we have it projected let's read together only two verses one two read please now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt stop 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 there was corn in egypt everybody say corn in egypt egypt is a place that represents a government that is antichrist and yet he said because there was corn in egypt jacob said unto his sons why do ye look upon one another read verse 2 one to read please and he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt get you down tether and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die keep that scripture there please a prophet is about to die because although he's a prophet he has no corn and satan put corn in egypt so that israel will go to egypt hunger always takes israel to egypt please listen satan does not tell you to go to egypt by drawing and forcing you all he needs to do is to ensure only egypt has gone eventually you will find your way to egypt this is a prophet about to mortgage his future he said if we do not eat corn we will die So it was never your desire to get into prostitution. You were a child of God. Love God with all your heart. But when you found out that it was only Egypt that had corn, the first year you said, God forbid, I will never give my body for anything. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The economy kept growing. When you heard that 500,000 naira was needed, otherwise your mother would die in seven days suddenly corn in egypt you didn't know when you went to egypt and said no matter what i have to do my mother must leave is god speaking to us tonight so please understand that a true prosperity gospel is not about money it's not about acquiring things although things will come but the spiritual understanding is to provide a system of time redemption that can allow a generation time to host God and to reveal God within their time. And I can tell you, our generation will not miss it. Listen, today it is a strange thing to find a man at home on a weekday with his wife even if you are praying people say what you mean you don't do anything and the worst part of it is that while you are staying in that house you are still blessed people say i i, I already know that you are you are either a drug baron or you are an arm robber we believe the secret to wealth is in going to look for something you are not wrong but you are wrong Please understand what I'm teaching you. 
A lot of people continue to thank God for what God is doing in my life today and I'm truly honored to be appreciated by a generation for what He's made me to represent to a generation. But did you know, you don't want to know the amount of time I give God to know Him. The real proof of love is the investment of time. It takes time to pray. It takes time to pray down the power and the glory of God upon your life. You will never have that time when certain things are not in place. So this summit, listen please, was designed to number one, correct your philosophy of kingdom wealth. Number two, show you God's authorized pathway to become wealthy transgenerationally and yet your soul prospering while you do so. You see, these are the people that Satan is afraid of. Those who prosper even as their souls prosper. That the more you become wealthy, the more your knees can go on the ground to worship God. Now that's a frustration to Satan. And let me tell you this, some of us here may be comfortable here and there. You have some money in your account, you have a good job. You know you are truly prosperous when you can give any amount to the cause of the gospel without it affecting you. If you are not there yet, then listen. True wealth is not having some money the, the level of poverty has made us so selfish. Once you have some money, you can buy some clothes, take some trips abroad, have some money, have a nice house, build a few estates. We just say, I'm a multi-millionaire. No, sir. The degree to which you're giving does not affect your life and yet affects destinies is a proof of true wealth. There is a standard we are giving in the Bible if your wealth only blesses your children, you are poor. According to God's design, your grandchildren is the minimum standard. The longevity of your wealth should at least reach your grandchildren. A good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Now, our generation, average young man does not start from ground zero. You start from minus. You have to correct something that you inherited. Um, listen, I, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. You get what I'm teaching? I'm provoking you. By the time you are done correcting that and you get to ground zero, you are 40 years old. Then you now start managing your own life. By the time your children are ready to grow, you are 60 years old. You are 70 years. This is why we continue to be distracted. And the economy now has been manipulated again and again. As, as I was driving through from the airport coming to this beautiful city, I left Lagos this morning to be here. And I just continued to nod my head. And I said, oh God, again and again, let your people receive this. Let me tell you. The generation that will say thank you is not us, it's our children. Let me repeat myself. The generation that will say thank you to Joss for receiving the truth is not us, it's our children. We are the bridge between the errors of the past and the blessings of the future. We are that generation that are willing to pay that price. That what I did not have, let my children have. And if you share that philosophy, then you will be able to listen tonight very sincerely. Otherwise, you are going to translate the same thing and watch it wreck your life and watch wreck your church, wreck your children and your children's children. Praise the Lord. Are we together? So the next time you see someone talking and says, all these people just talking about money, tell him, well, everybody is not the same. There is a correct balanced communication of truth that relates to the empowerment of the saints from a kingdom perspective and the object the real commodity of exchange is not business is the souls of men and the time 
of men. It is my desire that we get to points in our lives where the revival that has been long prophesied over this city and over this nation, that men will be able to give God enough time to host that dimension of grace. You will not be able to give Him that time hungry. You will not be able to give Him that time when you are looking for school fees for one or two of your children and fighting with a landlord here and there over rent and, you know, dreaming of cars and all all the only pictures you paste on your wall are cars and houses. Those things are not necessarily wrong. But there is a higher cause. There is a greater reason. One more point. It is a cause. I've said it before, but I will repeat it. It is a cause to spend your lifetime looking for money. It's an uncomfortable truth. Don't get uncomfortable about it. Just listen to me. I will explain it. The average young man in this country graduates, say, between maybe 25 and 30 years. And the work service time in this nation is about 30 to 35 years, depending on what corporation or what institute. And most people, from the time they are done with school, the high institution of learning, sometimes they even begin to work before them. And from that time until they retire, they continue to chase this object called money. And by the time they are done retiring, they only live with regrets. Health concerns, challenges of children, and all kinds of things that would have happened. They live to their graves sad. This summit is correcting this about your life. So that you do not follow that pathway. And then so that you can be a blessing also to your parents. And say, Mama, I've learned. The question you ask in your youth, I have come to answer it. That is this how our life should be. That my entire life be spent from morning to night. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. There is a bread that does not satisfy. It gives sorrow. You keep eating it and all that comes to you is sorrow. Please, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Please listen. These things that I share with you now, in addition to the things that we're going to be sharing with you, are not opinions. They are not suggestions. You see, before you listen to a man, probe his results. Don't listen randomly. I grew up in this very city. I was born and bred in this very city. You've heard me say it again and again. So I'm not some person that just arrived from somewhere. No. God has granted understanding. When God was going to call me into ministry, I took out time to cry before God. I said, Lord, please, don't just show me the things that relate to impact and the anointing alone. I have seen this finance thing crush people into pieces, change people's messages. I don't want this wine and oil to be corrupted because of my own. Show me the pathway. And the Lord opened my eyes through revelation and through the power of strategic mentorship to some of the truths that I will be sharing now. We'll take one of them tonight. Whatever sacrifice you can make for the business session tomorrow, please make. Please. Please. Six o'clock is not too early for any serious person. Are we together? Yes. Make it so that you can learn something and have the opportunity to ask questions. Then at the end tomorrow, we'll have time to pray. Write this down, please. The economic system of the kingdom is based on the following truths. Then put a colon. The economic system of the kingdom is based on the following truths. That means that you have to be aware of the following. 
in dealing with God's economic system. The economic system of the kingdom is based on the following truths. Can I dictate? Number one, the understanding that all wealth comes from God and belongs to God. Please write it down. This is, these are the things, these are foundational truths that we must put in place. The economic system of the kingdom is predicated on this understanding. Number one, that all wealth without reservation comes from God. Not the earth. Not your farm. All wealth comes from God. And belongs to God. Do you have that down? Number two, the second thing you must understand about kingdom wealth is that nobody in the kingdom owns wealth. There are no owners in the kingdom. They are only stewards. Owners are rebels. Please understand this. There is no such thing as my thing in the kingdom. No. It is his thing given to me. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Ownership is the reason for lack. Ownership is the reason for greed. Ownership is the reason for jealousy. Ownership is the reason for hatred. Ownership is the reason for pride. In this kingdom, we do not own things. Owners are rebels. When you own anything, you have to maintain it. This is where high blood pressure comes from. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. Give me in my name. Together. So number one, that all wealth comes from God and belongs to Him. Number two, that... Help me, you wrote it down. Yes. We are stewards and not owners. Please let this be a foundational understanding. The third one that I will give you is all blessings come from God through men to men. Please write it down. You have to understand how kingdom wealth operates. All blessings without reservation comes from God through men to men. Men are never the source. Men are channels. Nobody makes money off business. Nobody makes money off investments. Nobody makes money off oil and gas. Nobody makes money off real estate. Listen to me. Nobody makes money off agriculture. All blessings come from God. They only pass through men. So businesses are only funnels. Not sources. All blessings come from God through men to men. When you know this, you will now know that a woman can be roasting corn and build a duplex. And you say, Is it really corn that gave that? No, the corn is only a funnel. All blessed. This is a mysterious explanation behind the strange lifting of people who do what should not give them that kind of blessing. They are aware that every physical platform that you are part of, be it a business and investment, whatever, is simply a physical system that allows the realities that have been released from the realm of the spirit to materialize into your experience. Are we together? Amen. Now, what I have to explain tonight, this is really tonight's teaching. You won't believe that everything I've been saying is just to, to bring our understanding to what I really want to share. A few minutes and we're done. My dear, please stand there. My friend, come. Can you stand there? You too. I'm going to use you before. Eh? You are the choir, but you are. Stand there. You too, stand here. We we'll have to find somewhere. You stand here. Now, everybody, lift whatever you are holding. Lift it up. Whatever, whether a Bible book, lift it. All of you look at this. These are all the things we continue to seek. Call these cars, call these houses, 
call this fame call this whatever now please listen you never get wealthy by pursuing money no hold on hold on just listen in this kingdom wealth is not pursued wealth is attracted please understand this once and for all that journey of looking for money you will never find it money runs faster than you send bolts you will never catch up with it the idea that i am looking for money is a dangerous idea you never look for money let me tell you this success is what you attract by reason of who you are becoming not what you do who you are please get this this is what i want to deal with tonight are we together i want to teach you a very powerful spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance this illusion that we will continue to look for things anything you get that is not a product of your transformation is like pulling a rubber ring it will return back that's why people continue to vacillate so you try to get a car that is not a reflection of who you are and then you lose it now listen please listen god designed possibilities and allocated dimensions to those possibilities please listen that means that life is in levels everybody say levels and that at every level there are possibilities allocated that reflect to your level of transformation are we together so let's say i am at level one there are things that will naturally gravitate to the mindset of whoever is at level one but my desire is the result at level five the system of getting it is to grow there not to pull it down here are you seeing the mistake that we make now you have to get what i'm teaching you so a young man believes that the key to become wealthy is to just go and start a business or to wear some clothes and have a regalia that suggests wealth and what you are wearing the moment you put it on there is a wrestle in the realm of the spirit because everything in this life is built twice first in your mind then in your life whatever appears in your life that was not in your mind your mind will fight it and treat it as a mistake and your life will be altered to correct it till it looks like your mind. These are laws backed up by God's integrity. That's why people can win lotteries. Millions of naira and dollars. But their minds interpret that breakthrough as a mistake. It interprets the breakthrough as an attack. So it begins to fight that money till they reduce back. Have you not noticed that the amount in your account and your pocket cannot cross a level. Occasionally you can get a breakthrough but it must reduce back to a circle. It's a reflection of your level of mental transformation. This is called the law of the mind. The law of mental transformation is one of the primary laws that do wealth. Superior to the law of value. Value is only useful when your mind is transformed please just listen to me listen to me i speak the word of the lord to you you will never enter certain dimensions until your mind enters there listen let me tell you this the bible says let's just walk this thing once and for all and then we're done ephesians chapter 3 please and verse 20 now unto him that is able to do uh, exceeding abundance above all that we ask or think then it says according to the power that works within us i've been teaching this and i would like to teach you now it says above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think 
If I say sit down here or sit down there, it means all of them carry equal value. That means that your mouth is a prayer warrior. Your mind too is a prayer warrior. And the Bible says God answers both prayers. So while your mouth is saying, Lord, lift me, your mindset is saying, Lord, forget about what I prayed in the morning. And the Bible says God is able to do what you ask or think. It is not only your mouth that prays. Your mind sends requests to heaven. So could it be that your current financial condition is an answered prayer that your mind has been praying and God is faithful to answer it? Please listen. Mindsets are powerful. They are the only authorized channels that interface the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. Show me a man who has not had his understanding altered. No matter what is around him physically, is a waste of time. It will eventually reflect his mind. Every state is a reflection of the understanding and the paradigm of the people within that territory. Are we together? So you carry a nice suit like that of evangelist now and give one boy outside. I tell you what will happen to that suit. In three weeks, the suit would have torn. He didn't tear it. The suit is looking like his mind. That guy never carried a razor blade to tear the suit. It's a law that your physical reality will eventually be a reflection of your understanding. The real wealth is not business. The real wealth is your understanding. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Anything that is built in your mind, you have it already. It doesn't matter whether it has appeared or not. Share a man who has finished the construction here because no power in existence will stop that man. Now listen. The way the Holy Ghost lifts men is that he empowers your mind on a journey. Your mind is powerful because it is spiritual. Your mind gets to where your body needs to go to and confirms and registers your presence and then comes to take your body. Follow me. Listen. This is the technology of wealth and growth. The Holy Ghost takes your mind first before your body gets there. It's a waste to take your body where your mind has not gone. Ask a young man, what can I do for you? You say, give me small capital. There's one business. This business is... Have you not noticed that it's when you join it that it doesn't work? The law catches up with you. It's not an attack. It's the prayer point from your mind. When your mind is adjusted, anything will bless you. Even what should not work. The power of these laws will ensure that you come out victorious. Listen. Years ago when I began to study about finances and I had the privilege of learning from very uncommon mentors. When I got their books, I was angry. I felt they were wicked people. I wanted to know the exact businesses they were doing. That was what I was interested in. What do they do? But the, everything they were doing was correcting my understanding. And I hated it. I said, these guys are lying. Tell me what business you are doing. Let me do it too. I found out that it was a lie. Anything you do physically. Let me tell you something. Buy a cloth that is not yet in your mind. Scenarios will be created around your life including stealing to take it away. Your life will never rest till your physical realm becomes like your mind. So the Bible says let this mind be in you. 
that Jesus first died in his understanding. He continued to say it. And then he died physically. Now watch this. So I'm at level one. And the only thing that was authorized by God's laws to come to me at a mental development level of level one is this. Are we together now? And so this naturally comes, sometimes even without me praying. And I look and I feel bad because I see the results of someone and I want it. But I do not know that these results were only supposed to come to another version of you. This version of you cannot get that level of results. Men are like softwares. Listen, every time this blessing comes, it does not see you because the version of you it was allocated to bless, it doesn't find it. So you are still there. But it says, no, this blessing was supposed to come to an updated personality. And since you are not that, it returns back waiting for you. So everything you are looking for is looking for you, but not this version of you. The ministry you are looking for is looking for you, but not this version. It is not with this level of anointing you will have it. No. The estate you are looking for is looking for you, but not this version of you. The key is not to get it. The key is to grow to a realm where it becomes natural to come. Let me tell you this. This is where the danger of living a fake life lies. Because you are forced to acquire things. Now, I force this to come into my life because I need to prove a point. And then I have it. And now people begin to say, wow, you now have this. And the law says it's not correct. Because the level of your mental transformation only authorizes these results. How did you get this? Eventually, something will happen and this will leave you. This will never leave you. If you like, push this away. It will find a way of coming back. Because your mindset already calls for it. It's amazing how many things you will not need to pray for if you concentrate on growth. That true success is not looking for things. It is attracting possibilities that come to the updated versions of you. Like a snake molding. You mold into an enlightened version. Now, let me tell you, this is the problem with the prosperity gospel as we know. It does not help people know and see that every possibility in the kingdom, generally speaking, is for everyone, but not at the same level. And so someone sits down who has not been trained by the Spirit to have character and sits down and is just wishing for 100 million and no regard for money. He just says, give me 100 million. Let's assume that person now has the 100 million. That person is a fool, so his prosperity would destroy him. Because the things he should have learned in the growth process that will now make 100 million naira become a blessing, he did not learn it. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. Not Jesus sought. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. A triumphant entry would not be organized for baby Jesus. Uh -uh. A triumphant entry will not be organized for an unbaptized Jesus. A triumphant entry would not be organized for even a Jesus who had not gone to the wilderness. As Jesus transited, the possibilities in his life continued to show. As any man who has enjoyed any kind of honor, they will tell you they did not even budget for that. They kept transiting. You sit down now and say, oh, I'm going to fly business class. It's a foolish ambition. It's not faith. Business class was prepared for a certain mindset. There is, there is a realm that necessitates it. So if you sit down in business class, then number one, you see, when you grow into realms, 
other supporting things that should happen to maintain that success would happen. If you sit in a business class with a shoe of 500 naira or one thousand, you are not there. If you sit in a business class and you are telling somebody, call me back, you are not there. Because if everything grew at that realm, those things would not be a concern. So I can know whether you are grown into success or you just got it by seeing the other supporting things in your life. You claim to be a millionaire, I should not see you at a place scratching a card to load. No, sir. There is a way that behavior happens at that realm. If you don't know it, it's a sign that you are not there. Even if there is a million naira in your account. And you see, the thing about God is when you are now ready to walk with Him, you have to go back and start again. You are not going to say, because I've been this for a long time. No. There are many things in my life I did not seek. I didn't even know that there were things like that. I only kept growing. Lord, lift me. Lord, change my mind. Change my understanding. And as I grew, do you know, let me tell you sincerely. Now, this, I'm, I'm just being open. I remember those days when I started ministry, you know. I would go and minister somewhere. And um, when I'm about to climb the bike to go or get into a car, the person who invited me will now bring out what is like the honorarium, like a bribe, and just fold the thing and say, Ah, man of God, thank you. They were right. Because I was anointed. But this is what my mind could attract. It was not an insult. Are we together now? Now imagine that I got up and said, See, if you don't give me this amount next time, no. You don't have to tell anybody you are changing. The law was designed to send a signal to your environment every time you change. Please understand this. A day will come where what you eat now will run away from you. The mindset you now have will reject that food. Not by you fighting it. It will leave you will not even know when it left. A day will come the house you now live in will fight you and run away from you. It will push you to another house without you looking for it. The new dimension of you attracts the realities. Listen up. This is, this is a big, I told you tonight is a deliverance service. Because our generation of young people are making a big mistake that will give us high blood pressure beyond imagination. When we see the, the results of many people, we use the bodies to judge. And you say, you are my age mate. You are my, um, what do they call it now? University um, 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 uh, classmate. And we do not know that our realities are driven by that which is built in our minds. Listen. I can stand here right now. Me and you, we are talking. Somebody will come to me, come darling, and sow a seed and leave you. Do you think it's just because the lady hates you? No. The understanding makes it wrong for this to come to you. Please listen to what I'm saying. That means the more I rise, please go back to me. There is a level you will rise. All of you come together without looking for them. They begin to come. Are you seeing now? It is vanity to pursue them because you will see them and never touch. Please go back again. I, I'm teaching you graphically so you will never forget. When I started my journey, or when you start your journey, nobody beckons on you. Nobody demands your grace. Nobody requires your value. Not because they hate you. All these things they are holding are yours. But the version of you has not come to the stage. So instead of looking for them, they will reject you. You fight for it, you have high blood pressure. This is how the saints grow in the kingdom. Change my life. Light me, Lord. 
Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Listen, listen. Chasing things will be the secret to your frustration. Hear what I tell you. Please sit down. Please sit down. We're going to pray. This is what our parents started doing. From age 20, I'm looking for money. I'm looking for fame. And now in their old age, they didn't get one. Let me show you this. As I take a step, all of you draw closer to me. Are we together? I'm changing. You watch it. I'm changing. Sakatoska I'm learning something. Gentiles coming to my light. I'm not looking for them. Listen, please go back again. Go back again. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Watch this. You come and then you come later on. Watch this. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Listen. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You don't rise by wearing new clothes. You don't rise by faking a new house. You don't rise by buying a new hair to prove a point. No, sir. First, Gentiles. Kings will not come. They have results. Kings don't come to light. They come to the brightness. So your results are here. Now only Gentiles are coming. Listen, if you stop at this realm, only Gentiles will come. But there is a level you continue to come. Kings will start coming. Captains of industries will start coming. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Listen, listen. This is why many people get angry when they see transformed people blessed. Because they say, what are you doing? They don't ask, who are you becoming? The real question is, who have you become? It is never what you do. It is who you are. Please go back again. Please don't get tired of me. Eh? Watch this. For as long as you are here in your mind, you will never get this. But the system was, it is many prayers that we pray are unnecessary. A law was already designed for every step I'm taking. Watch this. As I take a step, what I'm praying for comes to. As I take a step, you see that? If I go back, it goes back to. So the secret and the base of my wealth it's not left to God. If I hurry up and I take two steps, it comes faster. So now that you are in this kingdom well summit, as you are growing, what do you think is happening to you? Hallelujah. Please step back. Let me give you a few testimonies. This is a kingdom well summit. I'll just give you two and we'll pray. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Please sit down. I remember when I started out in my life doing my thing and I continued to grow in my mind. Change wrong philosophies, wrong ideologies, ownership, the pressure to prove a point, the pressure to let your contemporaries see you are successful and all the pressure that comes from home. Are you a child? Are you, you are an embarrassment? If you conquer those things, then you are now ready to rise. Rich people are not the ones who are greedy. They are wealthy as proof that they have conquered money. Now watch this. I got to a point in my life where all kinds of blessings began to come. Then I started meeting people. One day, I met a real estate man 
who I had ministered to and was blessed. And he entered a covenant with God that every estate on earth they build, they must build my house there too. I have landed properties today I have not gone to look at. I don't even know where they are. Listen. So that you don't think that I'm just teaching you nonsense. Now imagine that I left God. Listen. Imagine that I left God to chase house. Now don't get me wrong. We are going to teach you business here. But we are putting a sequential arrangement of things as they should be. The key is not to chase things. Imagine that I went around saying, I must find a man who will give me a house in all his estates. No. Everybody on earth is a giver. But there are versions of men they will do. Please listen. Everyone on earth, including the one who does not want to pick your call, while he's rejecting your call, there is a version of man that he will give to. Some of you here have come with all kinds of seeds. Some of you here have come with all kinds of things. Help that lady, please. Some of you have come with all kinds of blessings. Your relatives are asking you to give them. You are saying, I don't have money. Yet you can carry money and give a man of God who is not your relative. Why? Because a version of him. You can go to visit a mentor and a politician and buy wine and carry 100,000 and say, let me have the privilege of sowing. Whereas your neighbor is begging you for 10 grand and you cannot give him. Everybody is a giver. But there are versions that certain givings can come to. See, you will never be the same in this conference. Hallelujah. So this man comes to meet me and then vows a vow with God that every estate and they have a number of them in the country now and every one of it they brought the papers of my own place and I said, God, what is this? And then the Lord reminds me that you can stop when you stop here. There are no biases, my brothers and my sisters. God did this so that you will stop insulting your father and say, Daddy, look at the family we came from. Everyone today, right? He says, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You can lift your eyes from where you are. I got to a point where I met a group of business people that I prayed for them. And the moment I prayed for them, quite successful people, the Lord honored them in a very strange way. And one day, a call comes and they say, Apostle, you may not be interested in this, but we have decided collectively to make you a non-executive board member of our corporation. I said, what does that mean? What is my work? I'm, I don't even have that time. They say, you are not doing anything. All we need is for your anointing to be part of this business. Please listen to what I'm saying. I'm not bragging. I am helping you to see. I was born in this city. What you are chasing for, you will never find it. The key, listen, in this kingdom we run by staying. We don't run by running. We run by staying. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. You only chase after what does not want you. But everything you are chasing is just that the version of you chasing it. The fact that it is running is proof that you will never get it. Are we together? Please sit down. Every 
everything in my life that I desire and does not gravitate towards me, I don't pursue it. I find out the level of grace and mental transformation and understanding it will take and I grow into it. Because whatever you pull to your life that your mind has not gotten there like a rubber ring, it will go back. And it will go back and leave you in shame. Please hear me. There are young people in your city who bought cars but their minds were trekking and the cars damaged to become their minds again. Is that true? There are young people who enter two, three bedroom flats, bought chairs because of some big breakthrough that came from a business. But in their minds, they were still squatting. And trouble began to happen in that house until they were evicted in shame. Listen, never fake what can be real. The same energy it takes to be fake is the same energy it takes to be real. Growth is the real secret to wealth. I vowed in my life I will never chase money. I vowed in my life I will never worship money. I will never manipulate the people of God because of finance. I fear God. Three years ago, three kings came together to give me 18.7 hectares of a gold mine. 18.7 hectares. And early this year, they came again and said, the remaining part of it, we have not found anybody who is faithful and worthy. You are too selfless. You are more concerned about our community than your growth. Please, we are giving you access to every one of it. Everything. Listen, listen, if you let the things of this world trap your heart for God, you will fail and still go to hell. Listen to what I tell you. Money can be a lord to you, governing your life, or it can be a tool at your beck and call, that you rise through knowledge and understanding. So while you serve his majesty, it serves you. Never will anything take my relationship away from God. What shall separate us from the love of God? That these mundane things, they are useful. I bring you a balanced message of kingdom wealth that will make you lay up gold as dust and yet your heart is still with God even as your soul prospers. This obsession and thinking about money, 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 day and night money, the whole discussion, money, a man must, what was that saying again? Man must work. Daily statement. Aluta continua. Victoria is scattered. No, sir. No, sir. There is a way. See, let me tell you this. When you rise through knowledge, you will not fear your wealth. Because it's sustained through understanding. Remember the Bible says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. They are stabilizers. When things happen haphazardly, you are afraid of your own result. Because you know it will not last. This is where your wealth is. So the Bible says, guard your heart. You guard your car by putting a garage. You guard your rice by putting it inside a container. Correct? You guard your jewelry, ladies, by putting it inside some, some kind of safe. You guard your money by creating an account for it. But you leave your mind open. And the Bible says that is not wisdom. It is better to ignore those things and guard your mind with all diligence. He said, for from out of it comes the issues. Are you seeing what I'm teaching you now? That these things you seek for don't come from the physical realm. Help those under the anointing, please. 
that these things come from the Spirit. Just hear me. It is not because there is no oil on the land that you are not risen like other places. No. Dubai was a desert place. Men built Dubai here and what they built started coming from the ends of the earth to where it is today. Listen, you may be wearing a shoe of 500 naira. Travel to the boutique here. Don't travel physically. You will bring shame on yourself. You may be staying in one room. But go and buy the land here. There are real estate agents here. Discuss with them here. When you buy the land here, your mind will take your body and say, this is what you bought. Here it is. Listen. Don't try to manipulate people and frustrate yourself. Increase the members here. Change your finances from here. By understanding these things that I teach you, there is an exactitude to wealth. Wealth is a science. Wealth, listen to me, is not a, a thing that just happens. You don't have to be a politician to be wealthy. No. You don't have to be a businessman to be wealthy. No. You don't have to be a career person to be wealthy. Wealth is a response to an enlightened understanding. Kingdom wealth is a response. The poverty and the lack, a letter from... It is not, listen, everyone seated here, your property is scattered around just and everywhere. But the version of you now that looks at me, that is not the version that will go there. So allow Kingdom Wealth Summit to do something to you. And while you are sitting down here, you are becoming rich as city. Because your understanding is drawing possibilities and driving away others. Can you just pray for two minutes in the spirit? I think we, we should really, we should blast in tongues in two minutes. Just, just to settle this thing in our mind. Hey, Balanga Prakatosha Lebrez. In your light, we see light. In your light, we see light. Never again to chase money. Never again to chase things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. We're rounding up for the night. Please remain standing. Let me do a quick recap of everything I've taught you tonight. That number one, kingdom wealth is not about things. It's a battle for time redemption. It's a warfare for your soul and for time redemption. It is not about estates and oil and cars. No. If that is the scope of your pursuit, you have already lost it. It is a battle for your soul and a battle for time. Number two, that kingdom wealth is built on certain ideologies. Number one, that all wealth comes from God and belongs to God. Number two, under that point is that in this kingdom owners are rebels we never own things my car my house my child my shop my clothes when you own things you maintain them it belongs to him then number three that all blessings come from God through men to men. 
So any shop that blesses you, any business that blesses you, we'll talk about all those ones. It is never the business. When you leave God and begin to worship the business, the business becomes your source and the owner leaves you and the business. That's why business is failed. When God becomes your source, anything, a fish can give you coin if God is your source. A fish does not carry coin. But if the Lord is my shepherd, He can move anything to ensure that I do not be in want. Listen. And that wealth is not pursued. Please listen. Listen. Wealth is not pursued. Success is not something you seek. Success is what you attract by who you become. Not what you do. Who you become first than what you do. What you do is only valuable when who you become has been settled. Please hold hands together. We are going to use five minutes and pray error out of our minds. Are we together? Hold your hands in the next five minutes. No looking around. It's a kingdom wealth summit with a difference. It's a kingdom wealth summit with a spiritual paradigm. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit. That every high thing that is not of God must give way. Casting down every imagination and every high thing, every wrong philosophy. I have blamed the government for my situation. I've hated my father for my situation. But now I have seen that my financial destiny is at the mercy of my enlightenment. Secretive Alakata, avalanche of glory, pray, just pray. There is a financial renaissance coming. Men and women guided by understanding. Please pray. You are praying for the sake of your children. You are praying for the sake of your aged mother, aged father. Lord, I have always known that I am Savior that will arise from Zion and judge the Mount of Israel. I cannot remain in poverty and penury. Pray. Just help those under the anointing, God. Pray. Every thought pattern that has come from culture, every thought pattern that has come from my background, it must change. Pray. Something is happening to your mind. Every hiding must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing. Shall be 
every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Every mindset must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Please listen. Tonight, God has handed to you a key that you will say thank you for for the rest of your life. Believe me. Listen. Go and return all those clothes you have borrowed. Go and return all those money you have borrowed. Go and return the car. Stay honorably. From your one room, grow. Let your mindset enter your future and take your body along. It says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Forget about the money you lost in business. I don't care how much. Don't worry about it. Listen. Listen to me. I know that many of us here have lost money in business. You probably have been scammed by people, well-meaning and fraudulent all alike. Everything you lose while learning is a school fees you are paying in the school of wisdom. Now watch this. The vice chancellor of that school is God himself. Everyone who graduates, a receipt is given to you. Everything you lost while learning, you never graduate without being given every one naira you lost while learning. So listen, I don't care whether it's a landed property you lost, some money you lost in an investment, throw away all those things and just listen to me. When you truly graduate from this school, as the vice chancellor shakes your hand, he will give you everything, everything. This is why it is a waste to be angry, to be offended, to be bitter. If that 10 million were here, I would have built my house. No. Something else would have taken it away. It is not the person who scammed you that took the money. It is your mindset that drove it away. I know you will not agree with me. It is not the business that took your money away. Please believe me. These are laws. Think like a spiritual man. If your money left for no reason, it means it can come for no reason. I want to pray for you tonight. Please, listen. I don't know how the session in the morning is, but whatever price you can pay to please, think about your children, not yourself, not your job. Think about your aged parents, whatever price you will pay. If it means to come and sleep at the gate, make sure you are here in the morning and listen to the session in the morning. And then by evening, the things that we are going to be sharing with you, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, some of you, before this conference is over tomorrow, you will see these things, this demonstration. Listen, I want to pray for you. That you can leave this on your way home. You will see a call. That you had been trying to call the man. But remember your mindset was praying too. Ask or think, ask or think. Your mindset was telling the Lord, I don't need to talk to this man. But now, while you are in this meeting, suddenly, the angels can now begin to orchestrate these meetings. Menei, 
Dakasoni haka Menei Dakasoni haka Menei Dakasoni haka Abandai hafi godia Zanka Abandai hafi That will be your song, I tell you sincerely. Menei da kasoni haka. Menei da kasoni haka. Menei da kasoni Listen, all through this conference, after every session, I'm going to prophesy financial miracles. After every session, I'll be teaching you certain dimensions of wealth tomorrow. And I will show you that there is a dimension of wealth called sovereign wealth. Wealth that comes by prophecy. That if at all you found your way to this conference, there must be a token that you must return with. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says that every man who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace. It is costly to say what your grace cannot bring about. You will be shocked, many of you, at what will happen to your finances this night. Not tomorrow. Hallelujah. So every time we teach, I'm going to teach you other things. There are principles that you will learn. But there are people whose situations don't need a lecture first. You need a breakthrough. And I want to prophesy on your life now. Please believe. Please believe. Please believe. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your finances. I command supernatural alerts, strange, strange financial miracles between this night and tomorrow morning. I declare by the Spirit financial connections that will surprise you tonight. I open the book of remembrance and I declare in the name of Jesus let men and women bless you tonight. In cash and in time, I call you Bula and Hepzibah. Be the desire of many. Hallelujah. If I have the time, I will teach you about the Esther anointing. It's a grace that works with sight. That means the only person who cannot bless you when you carry this anointing is a blind man. For as long as a man sees you. It's in the book of Esther. I will show you. There is a grace. Maybe I should just show you as we round up. Esther chapter 2. Media, can we have it? Is it alright? Or are you closed? Esther chapter 2. Give us from verse 15. We'll read 15 and 17. Let me show you a mystery. The Bible is a compendium of mysteries. Are you ready to read? One to read. The daughter of Abihai, the uncle of Mordecai, uh -huh, who had taken her for his daughter, read on everybody, was come to go into the king. She required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. Everybody read the last sentence. On all them that, on all them that, on all them that, that means the moment you make an eye contact with Esther, something must leave you to her. It's a grace. Verse 17. 
Verse 17. Everyone please read. In his in his in his in his the moment the king saw there is a grace that comes to a man except a man does not have a pair of eyes but once they see you that would be your song go I'm showing you mysteries from scripture. Listen. We are going to pray this prayer during the impartation tomorrow. But for now I declare in the name of Jesus that anyone who sees you for as long as they set their eyes on you I compel them to bless you. I compel them to bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. In any way you have exalted money more than God. In any way your cares have made you to be so obsessed by mundane and material things. Even above your spiritual convictions. We reorder your priorities in this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have never seen from the start of this year. I declare by the spirit of grace, we activate it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So please, go back tonight, look at your notes and pray it. Don't go and sleep. You are on a project. You are about to wake poverty.